Hi, and welcome to this lecture on tissue organization, both for the general tissues and for specific epithelial tissues. The first thing that I'm going to look at is how they are organized into tissues. Tissues are groups of similar cells and the extracellular material that perform a common function. For example, providing protection within the body. That branch of science that deals with the study of tissues is termed histology. Now there are four types of tissues. We have epithelial, we have connective, muscle, and nervous. Each are varied in structure and function. Here is some characteristics of the epithelial tissue. It is used for the covering of the body surfaces, it will line body cavities, and forms the majority of glands. Looking at the epithelial tissue specifically, it is composed of one or more layers of closely packed cells that has little or no extracellular matrix. In other words, there is no space outside of the cells or there's very little space outside of the cells or in between cells. Therefore, they do not contain blood vessels. They are said to be avascular. When you are looking at the cells, they are composed almost entirely of tightly packed cells, one right next to the other. Now they do exhibit polarity, that is they have both an apical surface and a basal surface. Looking at the apical surface, that is the surface that is exposed to the external environment or to the internal body space, often called a lumen. It may have either microvilli or cilia. The basal surface is the epithelial that is attached to the connective tissue that helps hold it in place. On the sides of those cells, or the lateral surface, you have intercellular junctions that help those cells stay in place, that attach one cell to the next beside it. The attachment to the basement membrane is a complex structure that is produced both by the epithelial and the connective tissue. It has three layers, the lamina lucida, the lamina densa, and the reticular lamina. It contains collagen fibers and specific proteins and carbohydrates. That helps form a selective barrier between the epithelial and the connective tissue itself. Now it is avascular. The nutrients are obtained across the apical surface or from the basal surface. Here is a figure detailing the structure of the epithelial tissue. We can see we have the major areas. We have the epithelial, which is the top layer. We have the basement membrane sandwiched in between the epithelium and the connective tissue. Now this basement membrane is what attaches the epithelial to the connective tissue. And keep in mind that it is selective. When you are looking at just the cells, and these are our cells here, we have the apical surface. Keep in mind this is the one next to the external environment or the lumen. And we have the basal surface, which is next to the basal membrane here. And we also have the lateral surface. That's on the sides of the cells that often have intracellular junctions that hold the two cells together. The functions of epithelial tissues are varied. One such function is for physical protection. It protects the external and internal surfaces from things such as dehydration, abrasion, and or destruction. You, they are also selectively permeable. They are relatively impermeable to some substances but allow the passage of other molecules. They can function in secretions. Some are specialized to secrete specific chemicals. It may be scattered among other cell types and they can form exocrine or endocrine glands. They can be used in sensations. They can contain nerve endings and be used for things such as receptors to supply information to the nervous system. They can give you information on touch, pressure, temperature, pain. You can also have specialized epithelium termed noroepithelium. These are the cells responsible for sight, taste, smell, hearing, and equilibrium. Now epithelial tissue is classified by a two-part name. The first part tells you the number of cell layers that you have in that tissue 
and the second part tells you the shape of the cells at the apical surface. That's important to understand. When you are looking at these cells that have multiple layers, you have to look at the apical surface cells to determine what shape those cells are. First is the simple epithelial. This is a general kind. Simple tells you the number of cell layers. It is one cell layer thick. The, all cells are in direct contact with a basement membrane. They are found in areas where there is very little stress applied. They are used for filtration, absorption, or secretion as a primary function. Examples would be things such as the lining of the air sacs of the lungs called alveoli, in the intestines, and blood vessels. A stratified epithelial, stratified tells you how many cell layers. It's a, it's a general term that stands for two or more layers of epithelial cells where only the basal layer is in contact with the basement membrane and these are found in areas that are subject to mechanical stresses because of the multiple layers they are better able to resist wear and tear for example you would see them on your skin the lining of the pharynx and esophagus now the cells in the basal layer will continuously regenerate as the layers at the apical surface are lost so that they can be replenished. The third general kind is the pseudostratified epithelial and keep in mind pseudo or the prefix pseudo means false so this one is falsely stratified. All cells do attach to the basement membrane however even though they all attach to the basement membrane, meaning there's only one layer, it appears as if there are more than one layer, generally two. And it's because of how these cells nuclei are, are distributed at the different levels. And add to that that not all cells will reach the apical surface and it gives it that false stratification look. The cell shapes, we have squamous cells. These are flat, wide, and irregular in shape. They are arranged like flattened floor tiles, and the nucleus is also flattened. We have cuboidal cells. They are slender and taller than they are wide. They can appear spherical with the nucleus, and it is in the center of the cell. The cuboidal, think of them as appearing almost as a cube shape. The columnar cells also appear kind of like a column. They are slender and taller than they are wide, and the nucleus is often oval. Lastly, we have the transitional cells, and these sound exactly like they function. They will transition in shape, depending on the stretch or the pressure applied to the epithelial. You'll see these a lot in the bladder or ureters, and they are found there so that as they expand, that epithelial can stretch along with it. They are polyhedral in shape when the epithelial is relaxed, however when it is stretched they are much more flattened and often hard to tell apart from stratified squamous cells. Here is a picture detailing what I've just mentioned. Here we can see the squamous cells with the pinched off ends. Here's the basement membrane and the slightly flattened nucleus. Here's a cuboidal cell with a basement membrane again and the round nucleus. As you are looking at these in the microscope, they will more often appear as a square or a rectangle rather with the nucleus inside. And then we have the columnar cells which are taller than they are wide. If you are looking at them in a scope, they will appear more as an elongated rectangle and the nucleus has that characteristic oval shape. Here's the examples of the difference between simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. Here's our simple epithelium. We have the basal membrane here. That's the basal surface of the cell then. And here's the apical surface and it is one cell layer thick. Here's the example of stratified Notice a couple things. One, here is our basement membrane again with our basal surface and our apical surface. But notice how the shape of the cells change. Here, even though 
it may be a stratified squamous they will appear more cube like but at the top we can see the flattened pinched off cells that is characteristic of a squamous cell so don't forget that we are looking at the apical surface cells to determine what kind of shape that cell is now the first specific kind of epithelium is simple squamous epithelium simple meaning one layer squamous telling us the shape it is the thinnest possible barrier that has a single layer of flattened cells with the spherical to oval nucleus its purpose is to allow rapid movement of molecules across the surface because it is only one layer thick it allows an efficient movement across that layer you often see it forming the lining of the air sacs of the lung these again are the alveoli you'll see it found lining blood and lymph vessel walls such as your blood vessels and lymph vessels it is termed the endothelium and you will also see it form portions of the serous membranes it is called the mesothelium the second kind is simple cuboidal epithelial simple one layer cuboidal shape of the cells it is ideal for small ducts and glands we have that single layer of cube shaped cells it will absorb fluids across the apical surface it can also secrete specific molecules you'll often see it forming the walls of the kidney tubules it can form the secretory regions of most glands including exocrine glands it covers the surface of ovaries and it also lines the thyroid gland last we have simple columnar epithelial it is a single layer of columnar cells it is perfect for secretory and absorptive functions and it can either be non ciliated or ciliated the first non ciliated it will often contain microvilli now these appear as a fuzzy structure right on the edge of the cells it is often called the brush border it will contain cells called goblet cells these are glands that secrete this glycoprotein called mucin with mucin it will mix with water and then you get the formation of mucus it lines most of the digestive tract from the stomach to the anal can the anal canal it helps with to reduce friction within the canal itself as food is passing down through here is ciliated simple columnar epithelial it has cilia projecting from the apical surface and it is used for motion it will actually move the mucus along that surface you will have goblet cells to produce the mucus you often see these present in the bronchioles and lining the uterine tubes it helps to move the oocyte from the ovary to the uterus here is our pseudo stratified or falsely stratified columnar epithelial this is the tissue that appears to be multiple cell layers even though it is only actually one because each is attached to the basal membrane and it can be either ciliated or non ciliated the ciliated will house goblet cells it produces mucus that is moved by the cilia and we find it in the passageways of the respiratory system such as the trachea the non ciliated will lack goblet cells and cilia and it is found mainly in the male urethra and epididymis